all right how's it going everybody so today's video is a long one but by the end we will finally be done with our dumpster and we will finish off with something kind of like this so in order to follow along with today's video you're going to want to head over to polygon we're going to be using one more of their free textures and it's going to be this one right here metal spotty discoloration 001 i'll be including a link in the description where you can get that you'll download it and extract it we'll also be using polygon material converter add-on for blender i'll be including a link where you can get that as well you're just going to download that do not unzip it keep that baby zipped up you'll just head back over to blender head to edit down to preferences find the add-ons tab click install find wherever you downloaded that zip file select it install the add-on then you'll just come back to this window you can type in mater here in the search bar and that'll pull it up right here you'll just click this checkbox to enable and then you can even come down here and click save preferences one final note before we begin i do have a patreon page so if you like what i do here if you find it helpful or useful or even just enjoyable any and all support is greatly appreciated and in exchange you gain access to very Various benefits but enough of that let's get started okay so to start we're going to shift a and bring in a cube and we're just gonna kind of move it over here a little bit scale it down way 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 down now the sizing here is entirely up to you I find it in like pretty difficult actually to, to find a good sizing on the wheels here Mainly just the, the little brackets that are going to, like the wheel housing, the brackets that are going to come down and kind of hold the wheel there. Because we need it to be long enough that, you know, it's beyond the these extra little fork slots that we s slapped down here. But I mean, it's underneath the dumpster. It should look good regardless. So we're just going to scale this down on the Z a little further. Could even, like, make this little base plate, like, a little thicker maybe to compensate but we're going to I think we want that to be whoops we can hit control 7 on the number pad to go into bottom view here and we might want to make that even a little smaller around and what we can do since we already kind of scaled it to um, a decent degree I'm satisfied with that for now on the Z what we can do is we can scale and then hit shift Z and what that's gonna do is that's gonna basically exclude scaling on the Z axis axes or whatever axis whatever and then we can just kind of scale in and it's only gonna scale on the X and Y so let me just start again to remember where it was shift z and i feel like something like that shouldn't be too unreasonable we'll have to see now that i'm looking at the width of that i'm gonna keep it like that for now though i'm not mad at it all right so next step is while in object mode we're gonna hit shift a and we're gonna bring in a circle we could bring in a cylinder but i'm gonna i'm gonna use a circle for this and we're gonna tab into edit mode with everything is selected you know if it's not already hit a and then just hit f to fill and then we're going to hit e to extrude on the z and just kind of bring that up a bit however much something like that should be fine go back into object mode i want to scale this sucker way down and then just bring it in this is why i like moving like every time i move i move while holding control because it ends up you know this thing is now like perfectly if i look at the bottom here and i get it actually into position it's like perfectly center with this uh uh with this square or it it, it will be <laughs> say it lines up pretty good right there in the center and i don't want it like that i just it, it helps me makes it simple so i don't have to like worry too much about centering it up i just clicks right there and there's ways we can other ways we can make sure that happens but i prefer this so we're just gonna scale this down maybe something like this i think that's fair and we can even add a little bit more 
girth to this baby. First of all, actually, maybe what we could do is go ahead and just flush it up against this uh, little square piece we got here. And just flush it up there so we get a, like a better visual aid, right? So tab back into edit mode and we can grab a whole G or push G and then Z. We're going to bring it down a little bit more on the Z. Wherever you're, you know, you feel satisfied with it. I think that seems fair right there. And I'm going to hit three on the number pad to go into right view. And we're going to grab maybe only about like four faces here, like somewhere right in the center. I think that seems good. That should be about centered. We got like one, two, three, four, five, and like that half of a sixth one there. One, two, three, four, five, half a sixth. Yeah. So that's pretty centered. And so with that done, we can, uh, once we have, like, we know the region we're wanting to select in, we can go into wireframe and then just box select over these faces again. Uh, it might grab, uh, the top and bottom faces you can just hold shift and select the like click on those again to deselect them or when you know when you're making the box select you just keep it basically it'll grab a face as long as that little center vertice dot is within your box select so you can just do a small box like this you don't have to like encompass the entire face you don't have to like do this nonsense you'll grab extra faces like that doing it that way so that's just a helpful little tip. We can just kind of grab right across this and we got only the faces we want. So now let's go back into solid view here. Push one on the number pad to go into front orthographic view. We might actually even want to go back into wireframe if it helps because this next part's going to be a little bit tricky or at least it can be. We're going to go up here to our transform pivot point and switch that to individual origins. And then we're going to hit E to extrude. And sometimes I've noticed that you need to move the mouse wheel in towards the object other times it works out perfectly and you can just move it away so in my case here it's letting me just move the mouse away but the reason I say to go into wireframe is because sometimes it's tricky to tell whether or not the faces you grabbed are extruding through the mesh and coming out the other side um, in which case you'll be like well you know if you're looking at it in solid and you see the faces start popping out at first when you're looking at it in the front you're like oh it looks good and then you'll come over here and you'll notice that this curvature here is reversed <laughs> so it's like, oh, okay, what did I do? Not that it matters, ultimately, in the end, we'd be able to, like, correct it one way or another, but just nice and simple, right? Less work is always better. Now I'm going to go back to median point here, and I'm going to just select these four faces first, and I'm going to hit scale X minus, or excuse me, not minus, uh, just scale X zero, enter. I'm getting uh, confused here thinking I'm duplicating scale X zero enter on both sides so that it flattens it out like that we get a nice little squared edge there looks pretty good and then we'll grab these four faces again and we might actually want to scale it down again I'm not sure we'll see how this looks if we have to we can do it after we do this part and it's not going to affect anything so now we're going to go back up to the transform pivot point and switch it back to individual origins again. Again, you can go into wireframe to just make sure that it's actually pulling out the proper way. And we're going to extrude and just see now I'm pulling the mouse wheel away and the faces are going into the into the mesh and we don't want that. So I need to push towards the mesh and it's coming out. So that's what I want. And I think we only need it to be about that right there seems fine. You can go like a little bit further if you if you feel the need, but I think uh, uh, whatever we'll go right about there that seems like a decent width so this basically is where we're going to grab here and we will extrude down creating the little side brackets for the housing of the wheel but before we do that to kind of help us gauge how far down we need to go we're going to go into object mode shift a and we're going to add in a cylinder Nice. And then we can rotate it on the Y 90 degrees. We'll scale that baby down way, way down. Let's just bring it into place here. And a lot of this stuff, it's all, you know, dependent on what you think it ought to look like. Hell, I've seen some dumpsters that do have wider wheels. I'm going to go with, you know, something a little more narrowed out. And right here, we can already kind of tell if we're basing it off of these uh, these end faces, those last uh, that last extrusion we made. We'll want to just kind of scale it in on the X until it you know roughly lines up. We can even go just inside 
of this edge here, right, on both sides. Because we're going to come down, and, you know, we want this thing to fit in there. But I think it's better if we just kind of slap it, like, pretty close to lined up. I feel like it is anyway. It doesn't have to be. So now with that done, we can maybe bring it forward a little bit more on the Y, bring it down on the Z, and basically we're just going to look for, you know, wherever the bottom of our wheel here is past this thing. So we know, like, okay, that's that's realistically, it's a realistic size, right? Like, you know, in a, in a reasonable length for our little brackets here. Uh, you know, obviously we don't need the wheel to be this big. If we don't want it to be, we can uh, scale it down. However, we are satisfied with the scaling on the X. So again, if we wanted to scale it and we wanted to scale it on like specifically just the Z uh, and the Y, we can hit scale shift X and that will do just that. It'll exclude the X axis and we can just kind of scale it in like that. And something like that looks fair. It's just past that bottom bit. We could even bring it down a little bit if we wanted. It's all entirely up to you. I'm going to do something like that, though. That seems good. And we can go ahead and continue on with kind of getting this wheel together. Just kind of finalize things a little bit here. So with both of these exterior faces, the big round faces on either side selected, we'll tap I. When the faces aren't, like, adjacent to each other, like, touching, we don't have to double tap. So that's neat. We can just bring it in, you know, wherever you feel is good. You can right about there. That seems fine. Okay. Then we're going to go into front orthographic. Again, we'll go into wireframe. We can go into... Oh, I'm on individual origins anyway. That, whoops, that's not good. It's bad practice. <laughs> bad practice. So we'll uh, extrude and just slide those in. We wanted to, we want to be on individual origins for this part. I just shouldn't have been leading up to this point. Um, and so just kind of gauge it. We don't want to go too far in, but like maybe about like halfway, you know, halfway in from either side, something like that should be good. Yeah, I think that's fair. Okay, that seems good to me. All right, and then we'll tab back into object mode and we can hit shift A and we're going to, in fact, actually before we do that, let's go ahead and just box select over all of our objects here and we'll just hide them because we want to be able to see the, because the, the, the cylinder we're going to add is going to come in here at the 3D cursor. We could have, you know, we could have just moved the 3D cursor. You could do that. Uh, so that's an option, you know, or you can just hide everything. So we can hide everything and then we can... Uh, add in the cylinder and now we're able to see it because we want to make some adjustments without clicking away after we've added it in or of course as I was saying you can just have everything there and you can just you know hold shift and right click over here for a moment but I prefer to have when I add an object for it to be at that same starting line so that's why I prefer to just hide everything when you add an object it's always gonna pop in wherever the 3d cursor is and when you, you know, shift, right click in a 3D space, it's just kind of wherever, you know, and I prefer it to be snapped over to the grid. And we can snap the, we can snap that 3D cursor to a number of different, you know, like there's a number of different ways that we could snap that around to different things, but I'm, I'm focusing on keeping things nice and simple, right? So I'm just going to hit shift C to put that back to where it was. I'm going to go ahead and actually just type her hit A to select everything and hit H to hide it, then shift A and I'm going to bring in a cylinder and now down here on the bottom left we have this little thing that says add cylinder, that's the last thing we've done, we're going to open that up and we're going to go ahead and drop the vertices count and you'll notice that it's kind of reducing the number of, well, vertices and faces all the way around and I think we're going to want to go with something like nine let me get a look here so we got this one two in between that one two in between that one and two in between yeah 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 so we're gonna go with nine yeah that seems good okay and then we'll just move this over on the x we can alt h to unhide everything go into front of orthographic if you feel uh whoops don't do that to everything we're just gonna rotate this semi-cylinder thing that we brought in here bring it over we're gonna scale it way down Basically, this is going to be the spokes. We're just going to create like a simple, like low poly spoke, like rim kind of system 
for the wheel here and I like the look of having just three little spokes that come out and having them evenly spaced so having this shape with nine you know the nine faces on it or whatever you know it's nice you could achieve having evenly spaced three spokes with having more but then you're just having more for the sake of having like that more refined kind of smooth detail on something that's not really going to be seen up close it's going to be housed inside this wheel here and it's going to be behind our little housing unit our little bracket that's going to come down so you're not going to you're not really going to see much of it so we'll just uh scale this in on the x a little bit scale it down more here that might have been a little too much but we can adjust as need be so we're gonna go into wireframe and we want to, yeah, I think I've done a little bit much there. Although it doesn't matter. Just kind of whatever you feel is a an acceptable amount here for this. I think that actually looks pretty good. So we're gonna bring this in and we're gonna line it up with this edge here. But you know, again, this is something depending on like how much you want, how much width you want on the X. I feel like something yeah, something right around here is pretty good. I'm going to line it up with this inside edge right there is pretty good. And just having like this slight gap here. I could even go in a little more. Just bring that in a little bit. Something like that. I think that's fair. Okay. So that looks good. I think anyway. Could even make it a little bit smaller on the Z and the Y, right? So that the spokes will have a little bit more length to travel. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And again, so we'll hit uh, S to scale. And then we'll hit Shift X because we're satisfied with our X scaling. And we'll just exclude that from this. And we'll go with something maybe yeah, somewhere in between here. We'll try this, see what this looks like, right? And what I like to do for this is I do like to rotate and we can rotate on the X and just kind of get like this top face nice and flat and flush. It doesn't have to be that way. You can always, uh, whoops, you can always grab it and rotate on the X to any degree you want so that maybe you've got some, you know, a little bit of life and variation there. I prefer to just have it up top, but I'll do it like this. <laughs> I'll do it. Okay, so we're gonna grab uh, one face for every two faces right so we got that one skip two, grab that one skip these two and grab this one now in right orthographic view we'll come back up here oh i'm still in individual origin <laughs> wow okay so we're going to extrude and just kind of bring that out until you see like right here you see how it kind of cuts off you don't see the selection edge anymore and that's because it's and it's going inside of that like rim that we created for the uh, the wheel there, so pretty much like as soon as it go like goes inside that, you can left click to confirm. It's pretty good, and then we will uh, scale, and we're going to scale again. We want to not scale on the X because if we scale on the X, then the I mean you could if you like the look of that, right? So like we could scale like this, and you see it kind of lifts these spokes off of that wall there if you like the look of that by all means go for it i think my problem is if i can get in there oh no it looks like that it looks like the body of it is still good so yeah if you like the look of that by all means have at it myself personally i'm going to again scale and do shift x to exclude the x-axis and then just kind of scale in on the um, Z and Y. Something like that should be pretty good. Yeah. If you wanted to give it like a little bit of uh, a little bit of something something there as far as the X. And another idea is we could go into edge select mode if it would select my edge here. We can just grab these outside edges on the front view and we can just kind of bring those in on the X right give it kind of like a like a star you <laughs> the little Pokemon kind of thing going you can give it something like that right that looks pretty good yeah nice 
Yeah, I like that. So, now what we'll do is we want to shift D to duplicate, and then we'll just rotate on the Y 90, or sorry, 180 degrees to flip it all the way around, bring it over on the X, go into wireframe, and we'll just match it up again to this inside edge here. Kind of slapping it right in there, seems pretty good. And let's go into solid, and it looks like we just have some different rotation here. If you want them to be aligned, which I guess they probably should be, then again, just hit R to rotate on the X and just kind of rotate it around just like that. So they're nice and lined up. A little bit of symmetry, right? Okay, so I think that's good for that. Now we can go back to doing this bit. Just going to take another look, make sure I'm not forgetting anything there. Okay, so this part is going to be a little weird. We're going to, with again, with these um, these faces here selected, and we can actually for sure make sure we're back in median point. We don't have to be in individual origins for this. And we'll just E to extrude down on the Z and bring it down however far. Go into right orthographic, and if you need to go down a little farther or bring it back, you just hit G on the Z and do whatever seems about right. I think I like it to be kind of somewhere closer to the bottom there. And then what I'm going to do here is, let's see, I'm going to go into right orthographic and I'm going to go uh, push one to go into vertices select mode. And then I'm going to box select these vertices here and these vertices here and then i'm gonna grab and just kind of bring them up a few points on the z maybe something like this and then i'll box select these inner ones and bring those up as well just a tiny little bit on the z just so we have like a more rounded end here that seems good all right and then what we'll do is in wireframe, we'll, whoops, in right orthographic, just box select this whole bottom uh, line of vertices here. And we want, you know, we don't want this straight up and down. I mean, I've seen some that are, uh, but I think, you know, the whole engineering design behind like the curvature when you see the curved brackets i have a reference image that i'm using here they've got like this it kind of comes down at an angle right and i think that's i mean you see here they have this rigid one and i think that's you know because like you know it, it, it's not designed for swiveling around whereas these ones are it's you know the swivel caster green uh, so yeah uh, I'm gonna go with that kind of a look. It's not gonna be perfect, but again, it's like, you know, no one's really gonna be looking that closely at it, I hope. So we're gonna hit G to grab on the Y, and we're just gonna kind of bring this forward about a few points there. Something like that should be good. We could even bring it up like one more. And then what we're gonna do, and this part is kind of annoying because when you do it in wireframe, it's not gonna add, uh, it's not gonna do it to both sides here. So we'll just go back into solid and we'll hit control R to add in some loop cuts. We're gonna mouse up, mouse wheel up twice because we're gonna add in three cuts. Left click to confirm. And you know, if you move it around, whatever, once again, you can just right click and it'll snap it right back to its beginnings. Wow, what happened there? Okay. And then we'll just do the same thing on this side. Control R to add in loop cut, mouse wheel up twice, left click, then right click, and perfect. Then we can go back into right orthographic. We'll go into wireframe. And this is where we will just kind of try our best to kind of get a little bit of a, a little bit of a curve going here might even have to bring these ones out a little bit more oops just take some time getting getting the the actual look of it to be kind of what you want i think something something in this general region should be good just kind of you know, box select each loop and just kind of, you know, bring them, bring them forward, bring them back, get it, you know, looking right. And then, so you'll notice that once we've done that, we had rounded off this edge to make it a little bit more round. And once we've moved it forward, it's kind of squared up this side now. But if we just, you know, we box select and grab that and then we just rotate 
if you're in right orthographic, you don't have to worry about specifying the axes. Uh, we can just rotate and it's automatically, because we're looking at it from the right, it's going to rotate along the X, which is what we want. And we're just going to kind of rotate it in until it seems to be generally where we want. Uh, just kind of something in there. If we have to, we can always grab these and kind of bring them up. You know, scale these in or something. Maybe a little bit. Just kind of do a little bit of movement there. And when we do that scale, we'll scale in on the Y. So just something like that I think looks pretty good. A little bit of curvature there. It's not like, you know, absolutely fantastic or anything, but it's looking pretty good. So now what we want to do is we want to get that wheel repositioned. So we're going to select, you know, one of these rims in any order. We can select that rim and then this rim and then the wheel. We can select the wheel, then the rims, whatever, just as long as we have the three of those selected. So we're moving them all together. We're going to hit G, then Y, and we're just going to bring this in back till it's about centered up with that. Something like that seems good. That seems fantastic. Now, another thing we can do is we can grab this face here and see it's kind of floating off of this. We'll hit one on the number pad to go into front orthographic, and we'll just hit G, then X to bring this face out and just kind of line it up with these you know, this kind of outside edge of the wheel there. So it should be kind of touching up against that as far as we're able to see, you know, seems a little bit more realistic. We'll do the same on this side. Wireframe, bring this out, slap it right there. That looks fantastic. Okay. So now we are almost done with the wheel. There is one more very crucial part we're gonna, in object mode, hit shift A to bring in a, another uh, cylinder. Uh, before we do so though, I apologize. Once again, I mean, you don't have to, cause I'll tell you, but <laughs> I'll tell you what it is, but we're just gonna hide all of this. If you did, you know, if you're following along with lightning speed and you already added that cylinder, just go ahead and delete it. Uh, so you can start from, you know, fresh, but we're gonna hide all that. Uh, and we're gonna shift A and bring in the cylinder. And now this time, we're gonna drop this one to, I think like six vertices. Yeah, that's what we want, okay. And then again, we'll just drag that over on the X. We can hit Alt H to unhide everything. We'll make sure we're only selecting our cylinder now, rotate it on the Y 90 degrees, and then scale that sucker way down bring it in on the X. This is just going to be like the little uh, the little nut piece. This little bolt nut. We're just going to make that. We're not going to put this fancy doodad they've got in there, like a, like a rivet, whatever they call that. We're not going to put that in there. That's unnecessary. Just going to put a little bolt on it. Just put a nut on it. So we're going to uh, scale this in on the X. Whoops something like that and then from there we can just scale that down bring it in going to right orthographic because it's way back there on the Y so we'll slide that forward and from here it's all preference however big you feel this ought to be it could be about that big I mean it is a pretty big wheel right like I'm just gonna scale it down just a couple points, something like that seems fine. And I'm going to slide that in and butt it up right against this little bracket piece. Go back into right orthographic, make sure I'm satisfied with the centering of it. I could probably bring it down maybe a little bit somewhere right in this region there. That looks good. Okay. And of course we can with the, the little nut piece selected, we can shift D to duplicate, and we're going to drag it over on the X right over to the other side, and we'll just bring that in. Looks like we could have brought this face out a little bit more to touch that thing, but I think it looks good if you're, as long as you're not like right on top of it, I guess. <laughs> Saw a slight gap there. 
All right, so there is the wheel as well as the housing for it. It's all done up, looking pretty good. So a few things that we can do to kind of just make it look all around a little bit better here uh, is we can grab this, uh, like the wheel itself. We can tab into edit mode, select with A, hit A to select everything, excuse me, and then we're gonna right click and we'll hit subdivide and you can come down here to the subdivide menu and just give that one more cut. That should be good. We can come up here to this guy here. With all of it selected, we can do the same thing, subdivide, and we can just add like, you know, maybe a few cuts on that. You don't have to do this. This is adding like more geometry or more polys to, you know, such small details. But if you want it to look a little less low poly, this is something that you can do. Uh, it might be a little too late for our bracket itself, but we're just gonna add like three subdivisions to that. Let's see if we can get away with doing a subdivide. Yeah, it doesn't seem to hate it. So we can add like two to that. And, you know, we can just kind of play around with this stuff. We don't have to do it to everything. We can just kind of, you know, you can if you want. In fact, actually, I wouldn't add the subdivision to this nut piece at all. Because it's supposed to be, a, it's supposed to have like sharp edges, right? Um... So anyway, with that done, what we can do is we can like right click, or not right click yet, but we can select a piece, right, like the wheel, then we can right click and hit shade smooth, and that's just gonna give it a nice, like smoothed out finish there. We can do the same for this bracket piece. Grab this uh, little, I don't know what you call it, we can shade that smooth. And it's gonna look a little weird at first because it's just using like the default kinda I think that looks fine. That thing probably doesn't need it at all. This one, I definitely would say, is entirely up to you whether or not you feel like you should say that smooth. It's it's spokes, right? It's a rim. Who cares? Um, and, of course, got to make sure that for these, you know, for the, the rim ones, if you did want to subdivide it, that, you know, it's... Uh, you're doing it for both. Okay. Uh, looks like I might have added more subdivisions. whoops whatever I'll just wing it it's also hard to tell when that one's on that side I notice they sometimes will look different oh well doesn't matter it's the inside one and I don't even care so anyway with that done now we're gonna start adding the textures we're going to just add a material let's go into object mode we're just gonna add a material to the wheel itself and the rim little spoke pieces but for the bracket housing, this whole thing, we'll actually add a texture to get that thing looking nice. And I forgot the uh, the uh, little nut pieces here, I think, are going to automatically shade smooth once we join it to this anyway. So it doesn't even matter. I guess it is best that we don't subdivide it, though, so it'll keep as much of that sharp edge as possible. Um, so let's go ahead and start with the wheel here. We'll come down to our materials. We're going to click this new button and we can double click right here and we can just rename that wheels and then we'll come up to the shading menu I just realized my screencast keys have not been on for this video so I apologize for that let's get in here real close so this is gonna be simple it doesn't really it, it's not you know some crazy thing we're just gonna drop this down make it black paint it black baby and I'm gonna try to just get it looking roughly kind of like a nice um, uh, kind of like a little rubbery you know so I want it to have like a little bit of a light reflection there and you know somewhere in there I don't want it like too rough I want it to kind of have a little bit of a, a little bit of a glossy kind of look going nothing too crazy just have a little bit of a rubbery kind of finish look. So I'm going 0.1 for the specular, 0.4 for the roughness. You could adjust like metallic too if you wanted even. If, you know, doesn't seem to make a difference so far for this one. But you could do that if you wanted. I'm just, I think I'm just going to keep that one. Or you know what, I'll go ahead and add like 0.2 or something to the metallic just for the hell of it. All right. 
I'm satisfied with that. Now for this little rim piece, this one is even less of like uh, an exciting part. We'll just come in here and add new again on the end of the materials. Double click this and we can rename that rims. And for this one, I'm just gonna like, I don't know, I'm just gonna like pretty much change its color, make it not quite black, maybe like more on the gray end. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and we'll drop the specular. I want it to be rough, give it like a plastic, a rough plastic look. I'll go 0.8 on the roughness. I don't really care. It looks good enough. I'm not gonna get hung up on these little rim pieces. So for the other rim, what we can do is with it selected, instead of hitting new, we can just come to this little drop down right next to where it says new and select rims. And that's going to slot that material on it as well. Now we'll start with our little bracket housing piece with starting from like the easiest to the hardest. So we'll select the square piece up here and let's make sure we come over to UV editing. And actually before we tab into edit mode, We'll, we'll select it in object mode and hit control A, apply scale. That shouldn't be terribly necessary for like things that we didn't really alter too much from its original shape, but just to be safe, it seems to appreciate that. So now down here on our materials thing, we're gonna click this folder for the polygon material converter and we're gonna find that texture. So I've got mine. Where is mine? Somewhere in here. Textures, and I believe it is metal. Where are you? I'm looking right at it. Metal spotty discoloration 001. We'll just double click there, double click that, double click metalness, not preview, double click, double click 3K. And once we're in here, just hit accept and we can load and apply and see already i mean that looks good this i mean this is under here and we're likely not gonna have to worry about it anyway and it's a cube still so it's kind of the default unwrap of a cube works pretty damn good for this so we're just gonna leave that nice and easy then we'll come down to these little nut pieces here again in object mode with them with uh with one selected we can do one at a time We'll hit Control A, Apply Scale. And we'll grab the other one, Control A, Apply Scale. And then let's tab into edit mode. We can hit Apply Material. And there we have it. Looks good. And we can do the same thing, tab back into object mode. Woo, if you get lost inside the dumpster, just get on out of there. Select this one, tab into edit mode. And over here, we can just hit Apply Material. Nice and easy beautiful now this is the one where we're gonna have to mark a few edges but I assure you it's nothing too crazy all right it's gonna be a little little annoying because we have all these extra edges after we've subdivided but that's okay so with it selected though in object mode we'll hit control a and apply scale it is absolutely crucial for this one since we have done some you know funky stuff with it uh, now we're gonna start by selecting we're gonna separate like I did for the corner slats of the like the frame of the dumpster. We're gonna select, we can hold shift and alt and it'll select this whole inside corner edge here. And then we're just gonna select these edges here. We're gonna go into wireframe or you can tab back in object mode and it'll, it will remember your selection within edit mode there. And we can just select the body of the dumpster and hide it if you want. If you prefer to have it just out of your way, we can go ahead and you know select all this stuff here. We can hide that. Whoops, I didn't mean to grab. We can hide that, get it out of the way. And then we can select this. We can even hide this if you wanted. Hide that, get it out of the way so we don't have to go into wireframe at all. And then we can just tab back into edit mode and as long as we don't click away once we get into edit mode, it'll still have our selection. And again, we could click away as long as we immediately remember like, oh crap, and just hit Control Z and it'll bring us right back. So then we're gonna hit Shift and Alt and click this top edge so we're gonna you know go all the way around right here where basically this kind of a rectangle shape meets this squared up shape we're just gonna separate that perfectly like that then we're gonna continue down the side here holding shift and alt to click that whole edge loop there same thing on the front side here shift and alt left click to grab that 
And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side here. Shift Alt. You can even Shift Alt to grab that side and it should grab all the way around the top. So that's nice and easy. Perfect. Shift Alt. Left click there. Left click that other one. Just make sure we got the right stuff. Perfect. And then we're going to grab this outside edge here. And if you Shift Alt click right there it's going to grab this first edge here and that's fine then we're just going to sh hold shift and alt and click that very next edge in and it's going to grab the rest of that like semicircle there and then we'll just shift alt left click there to grab those three and do the same thing on the opposite side grab these shift click and grab that or well, shift alt click grab that grab that and before moving on since we've got a lot of you know stuff selected we can go ahead and control E and mark seam and we can click away and looking pretty good now if you want you know if you're curious and you just want to know you know what that looks like we can go ahead and um, apply material and of course we have need to be in material preview and right now you know it's just you know all of the little detail is lost you can just tell that it's like metallic uh, and with everything selected, we can hit U, unwrap, and see our unwrap is, it's getting there, but we need to do some more work. Now, I mean, of course, if you're satisfied with this, I mean, that doesn't look terrible, you know? It doesn't look bad, but, you know, we could do more. Just kind of up to you. If you're happy with this at this point, it's just I don't like this nonsense going on right here. And, I don't know, maybe we can't fix it at all anyway, so who cares? But what I like to do is we can just... Since this top edge here, this or this whole top face is not going to be seen because it's uh, up against that square piece that we've hidden, I'm just going to grab all of these outside edges and I'll go into solid mode so you can kind of see better. I'm not grabbing this edge here, just these outside ones all the way around the entire, like the entirety of it. I'm not cutting off this circle from that. Then I'm going to hit Control e mark that seam, grab everything, unwrap. Okay, yeah, getting there. I think to actually fix that, what we'll want to do is probably separate just this, yeah, this outside edge here. We'll hold Shift and Alt and select that, and we can do that on this side as well. Again, this is not necessary. Or you know what, oops, I'm sorry. I see what I forgot. Here we go, right down here. We'll take the inside edge of the bottom here because we had selected the inside edge on the sides. I forgot it doesn't wrap all the way around the bottom. Okay, it would be nice if it did, but it doesn't. So we'll just select that, control E, mark seam, and then we can unwrap like that. And that is looking better. It got rid of that funkiness there. Uh, and I, you know, I'm even satisfied with that. I could, again, you know, grab this outside edge now and do the same thing, right? I could grab this whole outside edge as well as on the bottom all the way up to the other side. And, you know, it'll, it'll kind of help, you know, clean this up a little bit, get it more squared. But this is totally fine, right? Like, not everything is going to be perfectly squared. And why does it need to be if the texture looks good, right? Looks fantastic. I'm not mad at it. So we can Alt-H to unhide everything, and that's looking pretty damn good. I'm happy with it. The nut looks good. The little bracket, the housing is pretty solid. We'll double check. The wheel looks like it's, yeah, it's still, you know, realistic. It's just enough, you know, that it keeps this off the ground, you know? It's not incredibly long, you know? Like, the bracket's not, like, like a awkward length, you know? I think it looks good. So now, final thing we can do for this is we can grab this little nut here. We can grab this one here. We can grab this bracket and then shift click and grab this and control J. And I like to, whatever the last object you select when you're holding shift, before you're gonna, like if you're planning to join them together, the last object you select before you hit control J is the one that it's going to assign the combined mesh like that like the origin point of the last objects uh, or the last object you selected will then be the assigned origin point for the whole thing so i had selected the nut right and all that and see the origin point is up here which is where it was for just this little square piece and so i i like it to be that origin point uh and i like to keep it that way i don't want to have to reset the origin if i do it's fine it's not a big deal you can still you know manage but i prefer to just have it like this 
uh, I'll show you why in a moment. So we're going to select these two rims here, and then we'll select the wheel, and then again, selecting the, you know, house, uh, like the bracket housing bit, hit control J, and now it's all nice and done. It's all one solid piece with individual materials and textures, and it's ready to go. So we can hit three on the number pad to go into right orthographic view. I'll go back into layout view for now since we're done with a lot of that. And along the way, don't forget, you can always hit Control S to save. And okay, now we're gonna go up top here and we're gonna switch over to 3D cursor. We'll hit Shift D to duplicate, scale on the Y, negative one, hit enter, and there we go. Now, you know, we can rotate these around. We can select this one, making sure, of course, that we switch back to median point, and we can rotate on the Z and just kind of, you know, do this number and get it however we want. Another thing to keep in mind, if you want, is you can actually, I just joined it all together so it's just a lot smoother when it comes to duplicating and moving it around. If you want, you can take this whole square piece up here and you can separate that so it's its own thing. And I'll show you, I'll show you what, you know, I'm talking about. Because if you notice as I was rotating it, right, like it's, uh, whoops, excuse me, it's rotating with that square thing and that's not actually how it would look. And if you look at the little side brackets that we kind of brought off that thing, it kind of has like a better look, especially when you're further back. It almost actually looks like it's perfectly, like it's actually swiveling around that round plate there. So you could, if you want, it would probably, you know, be a lot more appealing for like animation stuff. You can, with that whole square pit or bit selected, we can hit P and separate by selection. And now, when we grab this sucker, and its origin point is still going to be up there. That's the other good thing about having joined it all to that. Now, when we rotate on the Z, it's going to rotate just with that. So you don't have, like, that funky look. Now, again, it just depends on what you're using this for. I mean, is anybody even going to see that down there? But just something to keep in mind, you know? Uh, because you never know. Maybe you have a moment where, you know... Uh, your dumpster is going to get like knocked over on its back, you know, like for whatever you're using it for. If you're using an animation where the dumpster gets like blown off by some explosion and it's, you know, flipped over on its side and then these things are exposed and someone's like, oh, wait a minute, why is this like rotated like that? <laughs> you know, like that doesn't make any sense. Uh, and it looks like I had uh, accidentally uh, had the the little nut down here selected as, with that square as well. Uh, so make sure you don't have that. If you did do that, you can control Z all the way back to where it's one solid piece again, and you can just make sure you unselect that and go from there. I'm gonna leave it as it is for now. I'm not too worried about it. I'll wait until I have uh, them all duplicated over where I want. So with both of the wheels selected, we'll go into front orthographic, hit shift D, scale on the X, minus one, oops, have to make sure we're in 3d cursor of course and it's okay if we're, they're already duplicated it's fine don't like control z you can keep them duplicated and with the duplicates still selected right see it says duplicate objects down here so we know the duplicates are still there it's all good and fine then with uh 3d cursor on for the transform pivot point we can hit scale x minus one and it all works out in the end perfect so there we have it there's our wheels that is the uh, I mean, for the most part, I would say, unless, you know, there's any other particulars anybody wants to do, that is going to be pretty much the last of the modeling. Now we're going to finish out with adding the materials to our bar up here. We'll create a nice little material for the lid. And I think the only other, you know, quote, like modeling we're going to do is I was noticing this bar up here is actually a little small in it. So we'll actually kind of get that to look a little thicker like this. So it's a little more realistic slightly more realistic because honestly this isn't gonna work with the lid with this nice flat square shape it's not gonna rotate you know <laughs> it would snap that plastic hedge off as you tried to rotate it backwards the edge of it here if you wanted to be really realistic uh, would have to be a, a rounded edge so it could actually rotate along this top face but uh, hey man <laughs> you know hey if you're if you're getting nitpicky about that, like if you were to see this dumpster in a game and you nitpick that, I'd be pretty upset. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I'm gonna leave my wheels as they are, but you can go ahead and kind of rotate them out as you as you see fit. Uh, I myself personally, last time I've used this, of course, make sure you're back in median uh, median point or whatever. And I like to have these um, 
uh, these front ones like perfectly aligned going this way whoops so that you know and you can go into bottom view make sure they're perfectly aligned along the X and then I like to have these ones kind of like angled in like this they're both facing the right way yeah kind of like that because the scene i used it in, it depends on where you're going to put it but the scene i was using it in there was a wall behind the dumpster here and so it looked you know it gave it the look that it had recently been pushed back in from this direction up against the wall and then slid that way so these wheels had enough time to straighten out while these ones were still curved as they pushed this end up against the wall once it was kind of all lined in you know i just gave it that extra thought of detail to do that you can do that again my little square things aren't going to you know make sense down here i'm not worried about it you can separate those and do the rotations of the wheel things separate however you want to do it so moving on though we're going to go ahead and grab this little bit here we'll hit Control a and apply scale time to edit mode and this is going to be super super easy we can apply the material now. It's going to look a little funky, but with edge select, we're going to shift, alt, and well, well first make sure, because I had these faces selected down here, make sure we click off, you know, off into nothing to deselect anything. Hold shift and alt and left click this back edge. You can even make sure that it's selected all the way around. It looks pretty good. And then we're going to shift alt and we're going to left click this outside edge on this one because it doesn't have this piece here doesn't have an inside face like this one does. So for this one, we're going to do the outside edge for this one that has the face back there. We'll do the inside edge. And with that done, we can control E mark seam. We'll go over to our UV editing tab. Hit A to select everything, U, unwrap, and that should be good. Looking good. Nice. Okay, and then we're just going to wheel around over here to the other side and do the same thing. Select that. Control A, apply scale, tab into edit mode. Edge select. Again, if you've got previous selections from the last editing done, just kind of click off of there. Make sure you click far enough off because if you click like that, see it selected that edge even though i was like way off of it it's like i was over here and then yeah see it selects it so you want to like click like way off so shift alt left click that uh inside edge shift alt left click the outside edge and then control e mark seam uh a to select everything you unwrap and apply material and there we go looking pretty good i like it nice yeah, looks good. Okay, now, so for this one here, we'll hit Control A, apply the scale. And what you can also do here, if you want, is you could delete these uh, these faces. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do that. What we're gonna do is we're, uh, first, before we delete them, then we're gonna select both of them. We're gonna hit I to kind of, whoops, gotta be careful since it's like way off over there. Uh, the origin, it's going based off the origin point over, the, over here. So when you hit I, just kind of, you know, easy on the mouse a little bit. Whoa. Right there. <laughs> Something like that is fine. Just so you can add some depth, you know, make it actually look like a pipe. And then you can delete these faces to hollow it out. And then you'll notice that we have this kind of thing going on here, right? Where we, you know, have that. And that's fine. We can fix that too. So we'll select this. We can actually select that one and select this one, and we can control J to join. That's gonna be important that we do that, so it's one object now. And then now we can, with them, or with it, because it's now one thing selected, let's go over here to our modifier tab, and we can add a Boolean modifier. Keep it on distance. We're going to grab our little eyedrop tool here and select our little cylinder pipe. And immediately we'll see some change where you can see now, you can see all the way through it. Now we want to go, come up here, still in object mode, and just apply that. And perfect. It's made a nice little cutout that you can see. Whoops, I'm going to stay in wireframe. You can see it's made a nice little cutout through our little, you know, swivel arm here. And what I like to do is I like to go through and and it's like kind of finicky it doesn't want to select all the faces you kind of have to like you can hold shift and alt or like sorry uh, how, how does it work is it not shift alt for this thing 
There we go. Yeah, it is shift alt. I forgot. So for some reason, when you're selecting like a ring of faces, it wants you to do hold shift and alt and left click like on an edge, and then it'll go all the way around. And it still isn't going to grab every one of the faces. There'll still be like one or two in between like these edges that you see coming out right here that you'll have to like manually just hold shift and select and that's okay and with all those selected we can hit x and delete those faces so we don't get like that weird kind of like artifacty thing going on that was happening nice see i'll show you what it looked like over here although it doesn't seem to be happening on this side so that's funny okay fine <laughs> it sometimes happens but it's not happening now and i guess that's for the best but just in case, I'm going to do it because I know it does happen at times. Huh. Oh. Oh. Huh. Okay, maybe that's why it's not happening on the side. It doesn't have any faces. Did I delete them? <laughs> did I select? <laughs> did I select these faces too somehow? How did that work? Uh, what is this, by the way? That's that. This is that. Okay. Yeah. I guess maybe that's just how the boolean does, you know, sometimes, you know, with slight differences in the geometry or the distancing of things, the, the boolean will create the, those cutouts in different ways, you know, and so sometimes it just works out different. Maybe I somehow magically uh, selected those faces over there as well and deleted them. Whatever the case, we're done with that. It's nice and good and ready to go, and we can select our cylinder here. Again, let's just hit Control A and apply scale just to make sure. We'll tab into edit mode, and this is super easy. We'll shift alt, and we're gonna select both the outside and inside edge on both ends. This one we're gonna have to do a little bit more UV editing with after we've marked these edges. So again, on both sides with shift and alt, and then control, or sorry, uh, yeah, control E, mark seam, and then we'll grab everything. Let's go back to our materials tab. We can apply the material first, and we'll hit U, unwrap. Now you see this going on, right? I mean, that's not good. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a random edge down here. I suggest one that's like on the back side, maybe like a little lower down, you know, a little further down. Just pick any one of these. Doesn't matter. Control E, mark that seam, grab everything, and U to unwrap, and you'll get this nice little thing going on here. Now this is where we're going to want to do a little bit more editing on the UV because if you look, it's kind of, you know, it's the, the texture is a little warpy looking. It's kind of blurry and stretched poorly. Uh, first, we can also right click with this pipe selected and do shade smooth. That already improves it. And back in edit mode, mousing over with, you know, make sure you don't have any other selections made. You can click way off over here. And just mousing over anywhere on the body of it. Hit L. And that didn't work. <laughs> I guess maybe I need to select one first. Select that and then hit L. There we go. Okay, so if you... Yeah, I'm <laughs> such a dork. If you select one of the faces on the side here and mouse over that face, you hit L. It'll select the rest of those linked faces rather than grabbing these ends. We don't want these ends right now. Uh, I'm not going to worry about them at all. You can, of course, but what I'm going to do now, if you remember from a previous video, I'm just going to rotate this so it's, you know, more representative of how the actual, like, the length of the model goes because, you see, now that I have it rotated on the X, if I scale it on the X and the UV thing, it's stretching along the X in our 3D viewport, and that's what I want. So I'm just going to stretch this out a good bit on the X, and then I can even just stretch it out a little bit on the Y. And already you can see that the texture looks better. It can be even better if we want it to, though. We can just kind of, you know, sometimes you got to get, like, real close on there. You know, maybe not stretch it out so much on the Y. Just kind of find that sweet spot. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good for a pipe, you know? That looks good. I'm happy with it. Okay. So, moving on. We're going to make a little adjustment back here to the back end of the dumpster. We'll grab the... Uh, well, first of all, what we can do is we can grab this lid, shift-click. Whoops. Don't grab the body of the dumpster. 
shift click both of the lids and we can hit control J to join. So now that's one mesh there. And then we can not grab the pipe, but grab these little brackets here and just shift click the brackets and join those together as well. Now we'll grab the, the lid We'll tab into edit mode, make sure we're on edge select, click away to make sure we don't have any other selections, hold alt and left click here to grab all of these edges and it's not going to go across both lids, it's going to go to the middle so then we can shift and alt and do that again for the other side to grab all of those top edges. Go into right orthographic view here, we're going to hit G then Z and Z again to kind of move it up a little bit long right along this. I'm thinking something like that's going to be all right. Yeah, that should be fine. And then now what we can do here is this part's going to be a little, you know, it might seem a little weird, but this is what we're going to do. So we're going to grab the brackets and then grab the pipe, control J. So now that its origin point is right here in the center. Nice and nice and perfect. So now we're going to scale and shift X. So we don't want to affect the X scaling here. And we'll just scale this out, get this a little bigger. Might even have to bring it back down so we can scale, shift X, bring it down a little bit. And then just kind of, you know, go through the hassle of rotating, slowly making little rotations and sliding it back in there. It doesn't need to be perfect, just kind of general that looks pretty good I'm happy with it so there we go nice and easy we did the shift X so that we weren't going to be scaling the pipe out to the sides it's, it wouldn't be the end of the world but it also would uh, you know we'd have to realign the brackets and it would just be as simple as like grabbing the whole thing and just scaling it back in on the X but that's just one more thing to worry about you know remember that handy little feature of you know scale and then shift and then typing the, you know, the, uh, the whatever axes you want to exclude from that scale. And it just saves you so much time. It's amazing. So we're going to do the same thing back here, though, for the pipe. We're going to actually, uh, I joined them together for the sake of making sure that it was all going to uh, scale together. Much less work. Uh, so now, though, we're going to separate the pipe. And it's going to be as easy as it was last time. Make sure we're in face select and we're going to grab one of these, mouse over it, hit L and it should grab the whole damn thing. We'll just make sure. In fact, actually, we don't need to do that, I don't think. Let me just make sure, yeah. We don't have to do it like we did for the front pipe. You can just hit L and it should just grab the whole thing. Uh, yeah, I think the only reason I was doing that on that one is because it had those uh, inset faces there. But just make sure you're doing it over the pipe so we have only the pipe selected. We'll hit P and separate by selection. So now, with that done, go into tab and we can do the same thing here grabbing both of these faces on the end and then we'll hit I just kind of slowly bring that in or not oh let me go back into layout here so I can actually get a little bit of better view Hit I. Okay, it's just going really slowly for some reason. Let me go into wireframe, make sure I do have that other face selected as well. Looks like I don't. I don't know how I deselected that face. Okay. So we have both of the. Oh, you know what? My shift key's been acting up. That's what. Okay. There we go. That's definitely more better. It's not making some weird adjustment. So something like that. That's fine. We can delete those faces. And we have this kind of funk going on here. I guess we could have, rather than doing it how I had done before, uh, you know, I deleted the faces of these brackets, we could have just pushed the pipe through it and then done the boolean. But we're going to do it now. Who cares, man? So we'll grab this, come over to modifiers, and we'll just add the, uh, wherever it is, the boolean modifier. Leave it on difference, take our eyedropper tool, select this cylinder, and then apply. And it should just get rid of all those little artifacts in there. That looks good. Okay, nice. Now we can select the pipe and edge select. We'll grab these 
Whoa. I mean, I guess that's fine. I do want that edge, but not, not this edge. I don't want that one. So we'll just select the outside edge and that inside edge there on both sides. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, grab that and that. And then kind of on the inside once again, or you can even do it back here. Uh, whatever you feel is like more, you know, like out of the way that's not really like visible. Uh, I'm going to go with this one down here. Just shift click that edge down there. Hit control E, mark seam. Uh, again, tab back into object mode. And before we actually unwrap, let's hit control A and apply the scale. We'll come back over to our UV editing tab. And we'll uh, apply the material, and with everything selected, UV, unwrap, there we go. Let's grab, we could also do it here in the UV thing, I don't know why I didn't think of that. Rather than trying to go through the bullshit, excuse my language, of, you know, trying to select the pipe, like all of the edges around the outside of the pipe, we can just mouse over right here in the UV and hit L, and it's going to grab that whole thing, rotate it. 90 degrees this way and then bring it up or don't doesn't matter it doesn't need to be and then just kind of scale it out on the x all right get it looking pretty good there scale it up on the y i mean i could probably even scale it more on the x to be honest it really doesn't matter scale it a little bit more on the y just till it looks pretty good and then, of course, we can right-click with it selected in object mode and select Shade Smooth, and that makes it look pretty darn good. So now we're going to take these brackets. We're not going to join it back up to the pipe yet. We're just going to take these little hinges here, and then we'll hold Shift and click the lid, and then Control j to join. And now I don't like the origin point over there. It's not a huge deal, but I'm going to reset that. So another option, rather than clicking up here, you can also just right click when you're in object mode and you have this option right here, set origin, center of mass. Well, that didn't do it, did it? Is that the center of mass blender? Is that really it? There you go. Okay, it didn't like me doing it in right click for some reason. Okay, I'm not trusting that anymore. <laughs> you have failed me, Blender. Okay, we're going to go to... Uh, so for the lid, uh, we're just going to create our own little material as we did for the wheels. And so to do this, we'll come over here. We'll add a new material, double click, and rename it lid. Or you can rename it dumpster lid, whatever you prefer. If you've got like jars in your scene and those have lids, then name it, you know, accordingly. Goes without saying, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the principled BSDF. I'm gonna hit Shift A and I'm gonna add in a diffuse. I'm gonna add in a gloss because I wanna give it like a slight reflective y kind of look, just to kind of, you know, simulate the plastic y kind of, you know, like that that, I don't know, that smoothish plastic, but I don't want it to be too much because I want it to look kind of old. I'll show you how we're gonna do that. So then I'm gonna take a, I uh, believe a mix shader here. I could be wrong, it could be an add shader. We'll just have to play around with it here. Uh, and you can go ahead and slot both of these in there now. Both, you know, the diffuse can go to the top, the glossy can go to the bottom. You can slot this shader into the surface of this. We're not going to see a whole lot going on just yet. So then we are going to add a, whoops, and the converter. We're going to add a color ramp. And then we're going to add, let me see here. I might be forgetting the other one. I'll have to see. I think it's just a texture noise texture. Yeah, that should be what it is. And then we'll just have to play around with it. We'll see if it goes factor. Let's plug this into the diffuse. And I think so far, yeah, that's looking pretty good. So what we're going to do, though, is we're going to bring this over. And it's up to you the kind of colors you want to go with. All right? So we're just going to make some adjustments. It's going to really start coming together, just one thing at a time. We're going to bring this down down to, or actually we'll keep this more light, I think is what we want. Yeah, a little bit more on the gray side. Maybe if we meet them halfway. No. Let's bring this over here. Bring that over here. Whoops. 
I gotta like play around with it and find that sweet spot. Yeah, that's right. We have to adjust the color. Whoops, the uh, of the glossy. We need to adjust the color of that as well. It just takes a little time finding a nice little sweet spot between these colors. Uh, probably even could. Uh, is that not what I'm thinking? Whatever. I'm just gonna roll with that. So the rough uh, roughness of the glossy. This is what's going to affect how you know. Like I was saying, I want to put like that glossy kind of plasticky look on there, but I don't want it obviously that much. So I'm gonna do like a point. Point two. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, maybe like a point three. We'll just kind of adjust it on the fly as we go here. I am definitely going to need to adjust this noise balance here, but I think I'm going to stick with this for now. And so what we're going to do, we also have the roughness of this. And right now it's just kind of like, you know, it's hard to really describe. But what we want to go for is we want it so that when I crank the roughness, it's going to make this look more like grime all over the lid here. So what I'm going to do is let's crank the detail. Something about six on the detail already getting there. You see, so if I lower the roughness, it's going to go back to that cloudy, blurry look. And that kind of looks more like a like a faded look. And that's not bad, but I like cranking up that roughness till it looks like actual nasty grime on the on the lid there. Yeah, I think that looks better. And so we can put the scale something like eight. I mean, you can adjust the scale, however, you know, just kind of play with it. See if you like, you know, if you want to bring it down so it's like bigger splotches of it, but then you kind of lose some of that roughness detail and then you got to crank up the roughness a bit more. Maybe like something like 0.9 on the roughness. Just find whatever works for you. Something like that seems to be pretty good. And then we can even bring up the roughness on our gloss, you know, because it still looked a little too reflective. Still kind of does. Let's angle it right here where we can see the light. And I'll find the nice little happy medium here that I like. I think that looks pretty fair. Something like that looks good. I like that. Nice little grimy looking lid. It's not perfect, right? It's not a perfect, uh, like, little detail to it. Especially, you know, could probably do with a little bit of work when it goes to the sides. But actually, I think that looks pretty good. Nice and grimy and old. We could even try up in the detail a little bit more. Let's find that sweet spot. Let's try rather than six. Let's try eight. Whatever you're happy with, I think that looks pretty darn good. Let me just go back around and make sure our uh, our pipe is textured out, looking good. Okay, let's go over to layout. We can go into material preview and the final step. I mean, you know, unless there's any kind of adjustments that you want to make and you can still like I can select the wheel down here. And even though like everything is selected or excuse me, everything is like joined together. We can still go to like shading if you wanted to like adjust uh, how the wheel itself looks because that was also a little like self-made material that we created You can just come over here with the wheel selected under the materials tab You can select wheel and when you're looking at the shader graph here It's gonna pull that up and then you can make adjustments to it So it, nothing is really ever set in stone until you do a render when you do that final render That's when you know, but I just for my own workflow my own sake of sanity I prefer to kind of fine-tune things to roughly about where I'm pretty satisfied with a, like a final look and then I start you know joining all of the uh, the uh, ob all the meshes together into one especially you know after at least waiting until I've UV unwrapped everything so final step though we're just gonna grab all four of these wheels and then we can grab the body of the dumpster here we can join that with control J we can click off of that. We can take this, these little side hinges and this pipe, control J to join that. 
we can grab this pipe here and the lid, or excuse me, we'll grab this pipe on the back, we'll grab our little side hinge thing here, we'll join it to the lid, and then we can select the lid and join it to the body. And you notice it was kind of like adjusting our, you know, our little grimy thing there. It was, looked like it was kind of moving around, that's fine. Again, we can just click it, make sure we select our lid here when we're looking in our shading uh, tab and you know we can adjust it however there but there we have it we now have a fully modeled and like textured and even nice little custom materials uh, like a dumpster dude and it looks great it looks old the wheels you know kind of look nicer but we can we can always you know do the same thing that we did for the top you can go back into uh, shading you can select the wheels and you can you know do what we did for the lid you know you could even add um, because essentially you know this is like the same thing you could get like the same effect like I did where I wanted it to kind of look like a like a little bit of like a have like a little bit of a reflective surface so it kind of gives off like this rubber look um, you know like that hard rubber not like not like car tire rubber but like you know that hard not very pliable at all rubber um and you know so you could do the same thing where i could delete this principled bd uh bsdf and i could uh, take you know a diffuse and a glossy with a mix shader and i could take that go to converter take a color ramp and a uh, noise texture, plug all of that in and just kind of play around with it and get a nice grimy old faded look going for the wheels as well. That is totally preference. I'm not going to worry about it here. I think we've done enough. All right. Well, that's going to be a wrap on this one and a nice little close on this dumpster series. Before I wrap up, I do have a Patreon page. So if you like what I do here and you want to show some support, you can head on over there where you'll gain access to various benefits for as little as a dollar a month. But anyways, that's enough out of me. Thank you very much.